what's up guys uh, a little different one today I get a lot of questions on my Instagram about like how to like actually rattle can rifles so I don't said I wouldn't spray paint this one but I'm giving in because my OCD this Rile 8000 peanut butter colored can is like can't handle it so <laughs> I'm trying to color match it a little better uh, break up the contours um, but yeah, let's just get into it. Um, I'll give you all a close up, but moral of the story, anything that you don't want paint on, you just hit it with some painter's tape. Uh, you can get creative if you want. I probably will after I do a, a base coat of whatever browns I have available in my garage. But <clears throat> make sure you protect your suppressor threads if you have that. Um, other than that, it really doesn't matter because it's gonna get so hot, it's gonna burn off so don't get too like OCD about it or too paranoid about it like these firearms especially if it's like a, a true rifle cartridge like a 30 cal they're generating so much pressure that if any paint gets in the muzzle device it's gonna fucking blow it out so don't get too wrapped up in it where you're like oh I, I have to make sure I cover all of it like you'll be fine um, but yeah if you have a suppressor um, if it's some sort of QD method, make sure you protect your threads. Um, if you can, so here, this is a, a night, night vision bridge that I'm going to attach thermal onto. Um, make sure you cover any Picatinny if you can. Uh, I already have a scope mount on here, so that's why my Picatinny isn't taped up. And then make sure you cover any important lenses. So here on the front of the Impact 4000, I have the, the ranging glass covered. I have the ballistic firing solution screen covered. I have, here I have the onboard weather station, the, excuse me, I have the onboard weather station meter uh, taped off right here. Um, I have the elevation and windage knobs taped off. Uh, getting into the actual glass, I have the objective lens completely covered. I have the ocular lens completely covered. I have all of my data safe behind probably too many layers of painter's tape. Um, I actually need to cover that up. So make sure you cover up the direction that you need to, to turn to make adjustments. You don't want to spray paint over anything that's important, like your mills or MOA, if that's what you're doing. You don't want to spray paint over your increments. Um, you don't want to spray paint any glass. You don't want to spray paint. Yeah, I mean, pretty much that's it. If you need it or you need to look through it, don't put paint on it. Um, me, I'm not afraid to paint my optics because they're mine. So I'm going to paint it. But, oh, and the magwell. Here I have a piece of painter's tape covering the magwell. It's like, a, uh, almost like an inch and a half wide. So it, the same thickness as a, an AC mag for bolt guns. So I'm not sure how mess up any tolerances because bolt guns are already finicky with the mags. So again, if you don't want paint in it, put tape over it. So. Paint there or tape there. I put tape on this bag rider just because it was black and I want to keep it black. Same thing with the cheek riser. It's black. I'm going to keep it black. Same thing with the barrel. It was black. I want to keep it black. So I tape it all the way up and underneath. That was tedious. That's why I'm doing this now and y'all aren't seeing me tape this whole thing up. Figured I'd save y'all some time. But now we're going to go into my garage and get the paint started. Okay, so here we are with the rifle. Um, make sure you do one more like once over because I forgot to tape over the magnification range even though it's not really that important. Uh, I taped over it just, just cause. But make sure you do one final once over. Tape over everything that you want to keep. If you don't want to paint on it, put tape on it. Now the only thing left to do is to grab some paint, 
or see what's available, but grab some paint, shake it up, and go to work. So this is the first color that we're using. Um, it's just part of the, the camo Rust-Oleum. Uh, it doesn't really have a color listed on it, but for those curious, there you go. It's that color. And we're just gonna hit it with like a, I don't wanna say a dusting, but just a, a base coat, just to break up this black. And don't be too afraid to get paint on your rifle. You've already committed to taping it up, so just hit it. All right. So base coat done. Base coat of the rifle done. That was done with the cryoleum or rust oleum camo. Um, you can choose either let it sit and let it dry or, or cure whatever. I don't really care because I prefer the beat up gun look. So on to the next color. Also, if you can try and get the the mat. The matte finish but uh, pro tip for those that stick around I'll show that moving forward so just this one's just gonna be light I'm trying to break up the different colors color is pretty much almost the same I don't know if the camera can tell the difference but we're just trying to break up the colors. All my neighbors are freaking out. Even though I live on, on a military base, I always find that weird.
Let's have fun with it. Is your rifle. Next color, this is a flat, but I wonder if y'all are noticing a trend here. Rust-Oleum. I usually only use Rust-Oleum. Um, I don't know, this is what I've always used. But yeah, just get in there, have fun with it. I think it went a little too wide here, but you can always just go back and fix it. It's just paint. This one's actually a matte coffee bean crayon. <laughs> Neighbors are like, what the fuck is he doing? <clears throat> now, just gonna grab a little sniper's veil. It was like seven bucks or whatever the fuck at like any surplus shop. Um, trying to get too crazy with how I do it. I just throw it on there. Now you're going to go back, get your first color and just hit it with some accents. All we're doing is breaking that pattern up. <clears throat> Do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of fucking have fun with it, you know? Like, kind of Bob Ross it. Like, life too short to be taking everything so serious, you know? Just hit it. Now, I'm just gonna shuffle this. 
so it gets a little different direction. And hit it with some black. Call it quits. Rustoleum Ultra Mat. Same thing. Looks like it's not even going through. Go, bitch. Yeah, I'm running out of paint. Oh, there we go. Same thing on the other side. You can also use this too, like if you you notice that you have like some light spots and it's like too light for you, you can just hit it again. See? Don't take it too serious, just hit it. And this is one of the pro tips. This has been like the only spray paint that I've been able to find that I can use as sort of like a, a shade downer, if that makes sense. Like it takes everything from being so bright and it kind of dulls it a little bit. And I know the sun's going down, so I'm trying to hurry up, but. Yeah, let's just see if we can darken this up a little bit. Hey. I'll just hit it back from the distance. Let's see. Kind of just darkens things up a little bit. Just remember, don't care too much about what it looks like, as long as it shoots. <clears throat> uh, this right here, this is the secret sauce. You want your rattle can job to pop, all those colors to like really come out. And I'll even like zoom it all in. So this is what we're working with right now. Kind of like a rustic, post-apocalyptic kind of feel. Like a abandoned, post-G-Watt kind of color vibe. We got the rust colors, sand colors. So now, that's all that looks like. Now we're gonna hit it with the clear coat. And it's just gonna bring everything to the surface and seal the colors in there that you put on. So think of this more of like a poor man coat. See, I started bringing those colors out. I couldn't even see those with my naked eye before. So I wonder if the camera can pick that up for y'all. Okay. No. 
I was just doing immediate, immediate zoom in, or even letting it dry. Like I didn't, I didn't even see this before. Let's pop that out. Some of that orange, orangey brown in here. Pop that out. Same thing on the other side. This orange, orangey brown. Didn't see that. And then this at the front. Couldn't see that. But now we're just gonna let this dry. Uh, next time y'all see it, we'll be with all the paint removed. And yeah, it's pretty much that simple. But if you're like, oh, well now the rifle is all glossy. The paint's wet, so <laughs> just gonna let that dry. The clear coat was matte, so y'all know what matte looks like. But yeah, let me put y'all in the hyperbolic time chamber and teleport y'all into the future. All right, so all the painter tapes is removed. Um, no, no paint on any of the lenses or screens that I think are important. Um, put the bolt back in, so uh, operates freely. Um, I think it looks pretty clean. Um, wasn't really the look that I was going for, but it's not all black with this peanut butter suppressor at the end. So I think my OCD is satisfied for a little bit longer. I might do something else to it down the road after it's seen some rain juice. Um, but yeah, let me disconnect y'all from the camera. And here we go. I know everything probably looks like black to off screen, but there's some brown in there. Got a little headlamp trying to show y'all better. There's some browns, some blacks. Breaks up that suppressor color. See? But yeah. All in all, that's how you spray paint a rifle. story remember when I was like all my neighbors are acting crazy and they're looking at me weird well one of them called the MPs on the military police uh, they just showed up and laughed like I was like hey I'm, I'm just painting this thing and they just drove off but still sad that gun culture is that way that people see a gun and they freak out uh, but yeah um, rifles painted there will be pictures posted on my Instagram with better quality and better lighting because uh, the sun's going down and I have this yellow light in my office and this yellow light here so everything kind of just washes out on camera but yeah don't be afraid of guns go train with them don't be like my neighbors and call the fucking police on people for I got paint all over my hands yeah don't be a fucking Karen um, but if you're sub to this channel or you follow my Instagram, then we're good people. Dad, if I for this video, um, don't be afraid to look dumb. If there's something that you want to do and you're like, man, my friends are going to, they're going to clown me if I tell them that I like doing this. You're hanging around the wrong people. Uh, the most that you push back that your friends could give you or should give you should just be like, you know, they give you some stupid nickname or something. But then, you know, once the conversation's over, they're cool with it and they're supportive of you. As long as that hobby is like, you know, nothing, nothing heinous. You know, like we're all into different stuff. We're all into stuff that we'd prefer not to tell people about. Um, I don't know. We're all into, into, into different things. Like me, I'm into anime. A lot of my friends are into anime. Like, I, I don't know. You might want to try something new. You might want to, I don't know go compete in your first piloting meet for the first time, but you're afraid that you gotta wear a singlet in front of other people. I don't know. Just, you, you get the sentiment. Like, if you wanna do something new, tell your fucking friends about it. Go go try it, but don't, don't let their opinions hold you back because when you're older 
or you're on your deathbed. Um, for those of you that don't know, I was in the military, so I <clears throat> I know a lot of people that are gone too soon. What you don't want to do is be, you know, on your deathbed and you're woulda, coulda, shoulda. I should have done this. I wish I would have done that. Like life is too short to be held back by other people's opinions. And if you want to try it, at least go try it once. You know, I don't know. Put it in the comment section behind your anonymous username. Let me know what that is. Like I'll be supportive of you as long as it's not harmful to other people. But you know, it's not my place to judge you. Go do your own thing, man. <clears throat> but wrapping up this video, that's how you paint a rifle. Go shoot your gun. Don't be a Karen. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and bookmark this video. Share this video if you know you think somebody has been thinking about rattlecatting their gun, but they don't want to have that like cliche military approach to it, where they're like, you have to use the foliage of the area that you're in. Like, bro, y'all just saw I painted this in my my driveway. Like, you don't need to be breaking off tree branches and painting them. Like, not everybody thinks about guns in a, a tactical aspect, even though, yes, that's what they're for. Some people just shoot matches. Some people just shoot, uh, just go hunt. Like, not everything is fucking Second Amendment. You know what I mean? Like, yes, that is what these are for. And that is why I train with them. But... Like, let, let's not take life so serious. Like, just go in, enjoy the shit that you got. Let people enjoy shit. You know what I'm saying? So, enough ranting. Sub to the channel. Thank God for stopping by. Peace. <clears throat>